Hello my friends, welcome to my ramblings as we move into Gemini energy. The sun moved into Gemini yesterday and the moon is going to be close to the sun late this afternoon and tomorrow morning to create a new moon in Gemini. So new moon is new energy and let's look at the month ahead. Our world is challenging on many fronts and in this post I pose some questions which are intended to help you focus on what is useful for you going forward. When we can care for the earth, our neighbours, consider our attitudes to what we currently have and how we would like to adjust our lives. Remember that breathing, eating properly, good exercise and excellent quality sleep all help us stay healthy and well so we can manage any of those curved balls that life might throw our way. So enjoy this post and please share if you know someone who would enjoy what I'm saying. I want to speak of it originally, uh, initially about retrograde energy because at the moment four planets are currently in what we call retrograde motion. They look like they're going backwards from where we are on the earth. And this energy encourages us to go within. It's time to consider what has happened and how we feel about how it's affected us personally. We must decide how best to accommodate those aspects of life that we cannot change. And then ask ourselves, how can we make those subtle and perhaps not so subtle changes and adjustments to our daily lives that can serve ourselves and our communities better? Sometimes, you know, we just simply need to change our attitudes. It's a bit hard sometimes, isn't it? I encourage you to embrace the changes that serve us all well and work to redirect your energy into activities that work to improve both your situation and that of your siblings and your neighbours. Energetically, we've also experienced a shift in the nodal axis. Now, it's a bit technical and I don't want to bore you with that, but essentially it means that our energies have changed, the subtle energies have changed a little bit. The nodal axis has shifted our subtle focus from our homes, cancer, where we were under the control of top-down power, Capricorn, to direct our energy into our immediate environments, Gemini Sagittarius. So we are using the internet to communicate until we can make those longer physical journeys, Sagittarius, to connect with our loved ones. And we're stuck in our immediate community. So ask yourself, what can I contribute to my immediate vicinity, my neighbours? Are there folk in your area who are out of work and could use some sort of support? Maybe a meal, a box of groceries, some paid work? Can you support them in some way? Remember that the government support cannot last. The planets change to forward motion in September and October and there will be action then. So we need to be ready to go in a couple of months time. Be prepared. You've probably heard the name Cartier used to describe beautiful jewellery, exquisitely designed and crafted. Maybe you have not heard of the name Chaumet. Jewel is in Paris since Napoleonic times to the royal houses of Europe. Now, you know, not being of royal lineage, I didn't know about them either until I read about them in the Financial Review. It made me think of the jewellery that I do have. All sorts of bits and pieces. Like many women, I love to wear attractive baubles and I have been gifted some expensive and beautiful pieces. I also have a collection of baubles. The 
that are not of, that are of not any real value. The question is, does it matter what the value, the purchase price of the jewellery? Or is it more important that the pleasure that it brings the wearer? When you have real diamonds, pearls and other precious stones, do you worry when you wear them because of the replacement cost? Or do you enjoy wearing them no matter what? Do you insure them? Why? I long stopped insuring mine. I'm not the only one. Venus retrograde in Gemini until the 25th of June is now prompting us to question and ask ourselves what treasures we really, really value. Is, is it jewellery? Is it art? Is it furniture? Is it clothes? Why? There's no right or wrong answer. Do you value them for the pleasure you have when admiring them or wearing them? Or the cost of the item? It is just the right time to consider what we really value and release items and attitudes that we no longer value, we don't enjoy anymore. I'm delighted that I can still be connected with my Gita teacher community. And at a time when the world is reeling from suddenly imposed restrictions on all kinds of freedoms, we can make a difference by focusing our thoughts on a peaceful and abundant world. Seems amazing that thoughts can make such a difference. But there are scientific studies demonstrating that group meditation does make a difference. So on Monday evenings, I am connecting with a group of teachers from the Gita School, from all over Australia, it's wonderful, to share a peace breathing exercise. Our intention is to calm ourselves and also to send peace out into that world. This isolation has provided us an opportunity to connect from a distance. And without ISO, isolation, we may not have considered this lovely shared time to focus on Zoom, on what we see as a world service activity. Now, many of us, uh, many of us are asking ourselves, what is going on? You read this in the media, you read that on Facebook, something else comes up on Twitter, on Instagram, on whatever. Are you confused? I think most people are. What is the truth? And we have different opinions. Some people have very polarised opinions. That's how it is. But, you know, we need to be a little bit tolerant because we are allowed to have differing opinions. Maybe we have to agree to disagree. The stellar energy indicates that this period is very much an issue of power and control. Pluto in Capricorn, along with Saturn and Jupiter. The virus is simply a vehicle for control. It's not about health, although the authorities would have us think so. And also, it is making us become more aware of managing our health better. So in that way, it's good. But look how our freedoms have been so quickly eroded and how we've succumbed to control. Is it right? I do believe that it is socially responsible to keep our distance from each other and wash our hands more frequently. However, I am not convinced by the dire messages being delivered from our leaders and our mainstream media. Statistics are regularly and dramatically quoted. What is the source of those statistics? Is it transparent? Where are the statistics comparing this health crisis with the common flu? 
Little is published about the facts that so many deaths relate to folk who already had diminished health conditions. My own experience with statistics is that vested interests can conjure statistics, can twist statistics to suit the purpose of their particular message. So why should I believe the, the statistics? Do you believe what the mainstream media tells you? Dramatic delivery of information serves to put people into fear and anxiety. Many people have lost jobs. And when you have frightened people, it's easy for control to be established as we have experienced. Frightened people also have diminished immune systems and therefore they are much more susceptible to any viruses and other bugs going around. So in between sewing quilts or while I'm sewing quilts, I've been looking for the information I'm looking for information behind all this. What is the truth? The stories are incredible. Pluto encourages deep investigation to find the truth in capital letters. And Jupiter next to him shines the light on what he finds. Ho ho, what sort of uh, revelations have we recently um, been aware of, been made aware of? The ordinary good person, that is most people, would be flabbergasted at the evil that appears in so many accounts. It's mind-blowing. The evil is embodied in real people and organisations, and in some cases, in beings from other dimensions. Really, Evelyn? Your mind must be really addled. Maybe it is. It's interesting to think about, though. But if and when we ever learn what the truth is, I believe we will be absolutely astounded. Vaccination is being promulgated as a panacea for addressing this health pandemic. Who has been developing the vaccines? It's not only Big Pharma. The name Bill Gates appears in so many accounts as one who's, in, who's keen to, inverted commas, reduce the world's population, inverted commas. Is it possible that this is a contrived virus? How would you feel if you knew that there are those who are actively working to manage the global population via deliberately engineered disease? Other names that appear next to Bill are men who wield considerable power and control via immense wealth and have the funds to bankroll such development. The power and control, remember I said it's about Pluto, extends to the mainstream media, pharmaceuticals, agriculture, education, banking and many more. I have been aware of this for many years. Now, I'm not anti-vaccination, but I do reserve the right to make my own decision about allowing my body to be injected with foreign substances. In the case of the viruses that appear seasonally, I know that viruses mutate regularly. They're very smart little organisms. How can any vaccine be developed with the appropriate rigorous research and controls that really addresses the current virus? Let me know if you know the answer. The other issue that concerns me is the medium 
in which these substances are, the vaccines, are often delivered. If you check it out, often these substances are harmful to the body. The medical fraternity is divided. Some have articulated their frustration. There's a fellow called Erickson in the States who's been very quite vocal about this. They frustrated at being urged to routinely offer vaccination to their patients. And I read recently an address by an Australian GP to a group of his fellow practitioners about the frustrations involved in this requirement to offer vaccines to patients. If you're interested, I can send you the, the script. And some doctors are asking questions about the value of isolating healthy people. Our community normally quarantines the sick. How do we may maintain our own immunity when we have no contact with others to stimulate and maintain our own immune response? Many of these doctors also question the statistics quoted by the authorities and provide credible data to challenge the mainstream message. But remember, I've talked to you about statistics previously. Those who dissent are, with the official story are being erased from platforms like YouTube, Google, Facebook, who controls those platforms? Why should free speech be censored? Because I am curious, I am open to considering many different options. However, I am disinclined to believe without researching the source of the information, which is often hard to find. And I'm not a researcher as such. And I believe that my time is best spent encouraging others to focus on what we can think and what we can do that will improve our situation. Spending time and energy on what has happened is not helpful going forward and only keeps us stuck. So some of the, one of the things we can do is care for our earth. Look how wonderfully the earth has bounced back without the... Uh, the poisons spread by mountains of aircraft traffic. The earth is amazing. Nature is fantastic. I've been gifted a worm farm. My friends Susie and Des moved, to, moved house and no longer had space for it. So I'm delighted to have a place to deposit my vegetable scraps where they will be converted into food for my little garden. My neighbours have enthused over it and added material to the pile as well as advice. Great! I look forward to harvesting the worm deposits in due course. And you too could have a worm farm or maybe a compost bin. If you've got space around your house, Consider developing either or both of those to recycle the organic waste instead of putting it into the rubbish, where it ends up in landfill and contributes to the methane gas production. As our organic waste decomposes, healthy microorganisms in the compost break down the physical matter and turn it into fabulous fertilizer for use in our gardens. This eliminates the need or, or reduces the need for bought fertilizers, which are often loaded with pesticides and other non-organic and artificial substances. So check out your local EPA, your garden store, Mr. Google, to learn more about how you can develop your compost bin. And if you can, go for it. Do something. Compost bin or a worm farm. It's really worth, if, if this is your contribution to the um, the, the, to the earth, to nourishing and valuing the earth. So now we also need to care for ourselves. Have you had the opportunity to have your hair 
or your nails done recently? While these businesses are gradually reopening, it's a wonderful time to explore the options offered by home beauty devices. Not only does the global award-winning Lumi Spa offer a lovely face, face cleansing experience for all members of the family, but there's a viable business opportunity with a growing and well-established global company. So who do you know who may be interested in considering an alternative or additional option for generating income? Put them in touch with me. We can have a conversation that may, not, may or may not be for them, but it may be, you don't know. I use my Lumi Spa daily. And then there's the twice weekly galvanic spa treatment, the wrinkle iron treatment to chase away the wrinkles, often called the wrinkle iron. So how old does my face really appear? No, don't answer that, don't answer that. With a new moon tomorrow, our focus can move to learning new communication skills and at the same time, calming the very active monkey mind which may be imagining all sorts of dire future scenarios. Don't go there. Breathe fully and effectively. Check out my YouTube video on breathing. You don't have to be interested in yoga to breathe properly. Focus your mental energy onto something useful. Use this time to learn about Zoom if you have not already experienced this platform. What other social platforms, social media platforms can you learn about? What courses in self-development can you access online? Maybe you are interested in developing better cooking skills, woodworking skills, pardon me, language skills. Explore the possibilities. This is the time. It's excellent energy for you to doing that. We are moving from a time when we have relied on outside authorities to direct our lives. The Piscean Age, to a time, the Aquarian Age, where we need to be self-responsible. You may want to seek the opinions of others, but ultimately we need to go within to ask ourselves for direction. What is that still small voice inside of us telling us? This means time alone in silence to allow the still small voice within your soul, if you believe you have one, to speak to us. The best way is daily meditation in silence, preferably in the morning before the day gets too busy. 10 or 15 minutes is enough. Ask yourself, what is your purpose in this life? Self-responsibility also means taking conscious decisions about the food we ingest and the exercise we do. I've recorded a number of YouTube yoga classes and encourage you to use them when it suits you. Yoga classes regularly scheduled either in person or on Zoom don't always suit our changing routines. And if you're a shift worker, it, this can be really difficult. YouTube classes allow you to choose when you do your yoga. It may be early morning or late in the day or even at lunchtime when you have half an hour to spare. Please check out my classes and, and like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. This allows the message to be shared more widely and to benefit more people. Now at this time I'm not asking for monetary support but I am asking you to consider what, if anything, you would be prepared to pay um, as a small monthly description to access the yoga classes on my yoga classes on YouTube. It costs me a little bit of money to make these videos as I don't have all the skills that are required. 
and I can't sustain their production if I have no ongoing income from their use to justify that activity. So I'm asking you, what do you would you consider is a reasonable contribution on your part? And, it, and I, you know, it depends on your own financial situation. Is it five dollars a month? Is it twenty? Is it fifty? Or something in between? Please let me know what you think. Now, after all this chatter chatter, I'd love to hear your opinions about what you value and why. Your interest, if any in alternative ideas about our current situation, or if you would like some references for further information. Who do you know who would be interested in maintaining their youthful looks? Who do you know who would be interested in considering an additional income stream? YouTube yoga classes, how much would you pay? Thanks for listening. It's a bit, a bit long this time. We're living in really interesting times and my mind is in Gemini overdrive. So please share this with anyone you think might be interested and love to hear the answers to your questions. Have an amazing May, June. Bye for now.